Hello everyone, today I'll be showing you what $400 million worth of vehicles gets you in GTA Online in 2023. Now to preface this, I'm not trying to say I have the most expensive car collection in GTA Online because I definitely don't. Some people have a billion dollar car collection. I don't even know how that's possible, but they do. And that is just roughly what my car collection is worth now. Actually, if we go to the menu and we go to stats, we can see here that I spent roughly $1.5 billion on vehicles and maintenance. That is accounting for everything car related I've ever done in GTA Online since my account was made in early 2014. And over the years i have bought and sold a lot of cars this is further proven by this statistic here which shows that i've earned 839 million dollars just selling personal vehicles alone so yeah i've bought and sold a lot of cars over the years mainly i did it for money reasons because back in the early days i didn't have much money so i would recycle cars basically to pay for the newest cars and that's how i did it but today i will show you my finalized car collection so now let's get into it starting off with the off-road garage we have the karen boar it's a pretty decent off-roader but it's kind of expensive in my opinion nothing really too special moving on to the walton it's a fantastic truck a bit expensive as well but i would highly recommend it for truck enthusiasts next up we have the monstrosity a very fast off-roader i absolutely love it but it is very expensive moving on to the rattel it's a pretty decent 4x4 and it does pretty good off-road as well and we also have my future shock brutus without any arena war mods on it i just made it look like a clean off-road example very cool and i get a lot of compliments on it highly recommend next up we have the desert raid i really only bought it for the garage uh, i wouldn't really recommend it the trophy truck is better moving on to the trophy truck it's a better version of the desert raid and it is also cheaper as well i also think it looks better but that's subjective of course next up we have the free crawler an absolute demon off-road highly recommend it and it's not too expensive as well moving on to the seminal frontier it's a pretty decent car but not particularly great off-road and it's not too expensive either which is a bonus finishing it off with the outlaw it's a pretty decent 4x4 but it's a tad bit expensive and it's just all right and that is it for the off-road garage these are all my off-road cars and this garage is worth roughly 12 million dollars flat Moving on to my OG SUV's garage, starting off with the Serrano, it's a pretty decent OG SUV, but nothing really too special. It is pretty quick for what it is actually, which is a bonus, I actually drive it pretty often because of that. Moving on to the BJ, it's a cool looking off-roader, but it doesn't actually perform that well on the trail. But yeah, it looks great if you can find it on the street and you want to have it for the OG SUV garage, I would highly recommend it as well. Moving on to the original baller, it's very nice, I actually like this generation of Range Rover, I'd highly recommend it if you're building an OG SUV's garage like I did. But other than that, nothing too special about this SUV, pretty standard fare for OG GTA Online. Moving on to Cavalcade number one, it's a pretty standard Cadillac Escalade, nothing really too special, it's not very fast or good at anything. I mainly have it to fit the garage theme. Although it does have LED headlights, which is pretty cool for the time period, back then Rockstar wasn't really doing that too much. Moving on to the Patriot, I have it in a military spec here, and I drive it sometimes, but it's kind of just a meh OG SUV overall. I would get it if you're into these sort of SUVs, but not if you're not. Moving on to Cavalcade number two, this one was in GTA 4, and that's why I have it. It's a pretty cool looking SUV, honestly. It has the option for a stereo system in the back. Moving on to the Granger, I have it just for the theme of the garage really it's not a good suv to drive at all it does look pretty nice though which is nice but yeah nothing really too special about that one next up we have the rancher which is probably my favorite out of this garage even though the wheel fitment is horribly atrocious as you can see here looks like a frog squatting down in my opinion but it's a pretty cool og suv i'd highly recommend it it is pretty hard to find though at least for me it took me about an hour and a half to find it on the streets Moving on to the Dubsa, I have it in an off-road build here. It's a pretty cool OG SUV, and I would have it for this garage as well. It also has some cool modifications on there that you can kind of convert into an off-road rig, which is what I've done here. Finishing off with the Homey S, it was a pretty cool SUV from this time period, and it was based on a Bentley SUV before the Bentego was made, which is a pretty cool story. And that is it for the OG SUV garage. Here's what we have. And this garage costs about 538000 Most of these I found on the streets. Moving on to my modern muscle garage, starting off with the Buffalo S. It's a pretty cool four-door muscle car, but it kind of just falls behind nowadays. Moving on to the Dominator ASP. It's a great looking car. Here I have the realistic looking wheels on it that the actual one in real life has. And yeah, just an absolutely stunning car. Highly recommend it for a modern muscle car garage as well. Moving on to the Dominator GTX. I wouldn't really recommend it. It's kind of slow and the mods are kind of weird and it looks kind of weird as well. I really only have it for the garage and I'm even considering selling it, but I'll keep it for now. Moving on to the Vigero ZX. It's a very nice car to drive. It's extremely fast. Although I wish it had better handling because the Camaro ZL1 10e in real life is known to have fantastic handling. Moving on to the Gauntlet Hellfire, it's a highly anticipated car. I absolutely love it. Here I have off road wheels that are meant to mimic bead locks, but I don't know if I really accomplished the mission. Uh, let me know what you think. Moving on to the VSTR, it's a pretty cool four door muscle car as well. Basically, a better version of the Buffalo S, in my opinion. And I absolutely love how it looks. Looks great in many different colors and has a good amount of modifications. Moving on to the Buffalo STX, it's a pretty cool four door muscle car as well. Pretty much a better version of the VTSR and also highly anticipated. I highly recommend buying it. As 
as it has a money tech as well very fun to drive in free mode moving on to the buffalo evx it's kind of meh with hsw it's a very expensive car and the performance is lacking i wouldn't recommend buying it unless you really like this type of car moving on to the dominator gt it's a very nice looking car although i wish it came in coupe configuration it only comes in convertible which is very sad this would probably be one of my favorite cars if it came in a coupe but it is what it is i'm glad we have it and ending it off with a vigero zx convertible kind of expensive basically the vigero zx but convertible and this garage costs roughly 14 million sixty five thousand dollars Moving on to my OG Supers and Sports Car Garage. Starting off with the Coquette, it's a beautiful car and was very cheap, but you can no longer buy it, unfortunately. Moving on to the Jester, I absolutely love the NSX. Hopefully, I have one in real life someday. And yeah, this one here is kind of just to remind me of that and to work hard for it every day, and yeah, I love it. Unfortunately, you can no longer buy it in GTA Online, though, which is very sad. Moving on to the Vaca, it was a pretty expensive car for the time period, but looking back, 240000 really is not that much. It's a very wide car, which made it pretty bad for racing, but I still love it. Moving on to the Bullet, I still love this car. The rear looks absolutely fantastic, although I wish they gave it some more customizations now. Nowadays. Moving on to the 10F, pretty iconic car on the cover of GTA 5, but nowadays it kind of falls behind. Moving on to the Chameleon, it's a pretty trash car from this time period, honestly. Yeah, that's really all there is to it. Moving on to the Infernus, a very expensive car for the time period, costing around $400,000. Made it more of a niche, but I still love it, and it was also in GTA 4. Moving on to the Carbon Azar, probably my favorite looking car from this garage, very nice. If they gave it HSW, it would be near perfect in my opinion, but we'll have to wait and see. As for now though, not bad. Moving on to the F620, it gets a bad rap, and I really don't know why. It sounds fantastic, looks great, and it was only $80,000 at the time it was available finishing off this garage with the voltic i remember this was an insane car at the time but now it's pretty lackluster not very fast and not much customization either and that is it for og supers and this garage costs about one million eight hundred sixty five thousand dollars moving on to mostly new suvs starting with the toros a lot of people like it but in my opinion i think it's kind of overrated the handling is very weird although it is very fast which is nice moving on to the rebel a better version of the toros in my opinion costs about double and is slightly slower but has better handling as well moving on to the grizzly i kind of have it in the wrong garage here i should have in one of my other ones but yeah overall just a pretty standard suv from 2013 moving on to the xos an absolutely gorgeous suv i get compliments on it all the time but yeah it's a pretty standard suv overall not too much customization but it does look very nice moving on to the granger 3600 lx it's a pretty standard suv from this time period which is new has a money tech and armor panels which helps in free mode moving on to the landstalker xl it's pretty much a luxury version of the granger 3600 lx a pretty nice looking suv but it doesn't have a lot of mods even though i'd argue it doesn't really need them moving on to the jubilee a very nice looking suv probably the best Best looking SUV in GTA Online right now. Also has a money tech and is overall a very fun SUV to drive. Moving on to the Baller ST, probably the fifth version of the Baller. I'm not even joking. Has a good amount of customizations, is decently fast, has pretty decent handling, and yeah, that's about it for the Baller ST. Nothing really too special. Moving on to the Strider, an SUV that absolutely no one bought. I've never seen this on the road at all. Kind of a strange interpretation of a Mercedes SUV in real life, but I think it looks pretty nice. I mostly drive it when it snows though. Finishing off with the Astron Custom is fantastic to drive with HSW. It's very fast. Handling suffers of it, but it's overall a very enjoyable suv driving experience and that is it for relatively new suvs and this garage costs about nine million twenty thousand dollars moving on to motorcycles i'm not a very big motorcycle guy in gta online i am in real life though and yeah i have a few fast ones i have a few choppers here uh the daemon here is actually very nice so is the hakucho drag and the sanctus i kind of just have it because i have the clubhouse space available and i kind of like all of them i drive them relatively frequently but yeah i don't by any means specialize in motorcycles at all i don't know very much about motorcycles but i enjoy having this regardless and this garage costs about $9,910,000. Moving on to a lot of people's favorite category, JDM cars. Starting off with the LG Retro Custom, it's a pretty standard car for this time period. It's not really too fast, but it was when it first released. Moving on to the Calico, the Calico is very nice. It looks just like the Celica that is based off of. And yeah, I love it. It's very grippy, very fast, and a very fun car to drive in GTA Online when you don't get blown up, of course. Moving on to the Sultan RS, it's a pretty fun car to drive as well, although not as fun as the Calico in my opinion. Although I'd argue it looks better, but that's just my personal opinion, and it is what it is. Moving on to the Sultan RS Classic, it's a very fun car to drive very fast very grippy as well and very fun to drive off-road i had it in a rally configuration but i made it more of a street build now moving on to the sultan classic four-door uh it's a pretty standard car although i prefer the two-door version of it moving on to the 190z the 190z is a pretty standard car the customizations on it are all right but the wheel fit it really doesn't match with the wide body it kind of pisses me off about the car moving on to the remus or the remus it's a pretty standard car as well although it did just receive a drift tuning upgrade which i will probably throw on it and for sylvia fans i'm sure they love it as well moving on to the zr350 i honestly don't enjoy driving it too much i have it for the collection's sake but 
If it weren't for the collection, I probably wouldn't have it, honestly. Or if it's tied for cash, I wouldn't buy it, in my opinion. It's just not worth it. But that's just my opinion. I'm most definitely in the minority. Moving on to the Penumbra FF. It has a decent amount of mods, but all of them look kind of heinous, in my opinion. Kind of sours me on the car. I almost never drive it. Although stock, it does look pretty good. And how I have it here, it also looks pretty good. But you can't really go over the top. Moving on to the Jester Classic. It's a fantastic car. I absolutely love driving it. It has a ton of mods that make it look fantastic. And yeah, how can you go wrong with a Mark IV Toyota Supra? Brilliant. And that is it for the JDM Garage. And this garage costs about $11,120,000. Moving on to my old school muscle car garage. First off, we have the Imperator from the Arena War DLC. Once again, an Arena War car that I did not modify with Arena War mods. However, I did make it the conversion so I can get the extra boost out the back, which makes it very fun to drive around. Next up, we have the ZZ8. Honestly, this could benefit so much from HSW. If Rockstar gave it HSW, it'd be a much more fun car to drive in my opinion, but it's pretty standard overall. Next up, we have the Impaler. Again, another Arena War car that does not have the mods on it. It is very fast, but handling does suffer a bit from it moving on to the dominator gtt it's a pretty standard car to drive although it does have a ton of modifications it looks absolutely beautiful looks great in a lot of different colors as well and i really love it moving on to the gauntlet classic it's a pretty standard car overall it's not really fast or particularly notable it's just an old school muscle car from this era it does have a lot of modifications though moving on to the gauntlet classic custom basically the gauntlet classic but with way more mods and it requires a benny's conversion slightly overpriced and now let's move on to the next four <laughs> Starting off with the Tampa, it's a pretty great muscle car. It is from GTA 4 as well. In GTA 4, it was a pretty great car then, and it is still a pretty good car now. Next up, we have the Stallion, a car I saw absolutely no one drive in GTA Online. It was unfortunate that when it was available for purchase, no one bought it, but I did, and I love it. Moving on to the Vamos, I think it gets more praise than it deserves, really. It's a pretty weird car to handle. It's decently fast, but the handling discourages me from it. Moving on to the Nightshade, once again, a car I saw absolutely no one drive. It also looks fantastic. I absolutely love it, and it is pretty low key. Moving on to the Arbiter GT, it it is a very fun car for what it is, but it's very expensive. With HSW, it's well over 2 million, and it's just kind of a lot of money. Moving on to the faction, it scrapes way too many curbs, and that's kind of my only gripe about it. Moving on to the Beater Dukes, this one I have modified back to clean restoration status. You can make it look dirty as well, but I think this looks a whole lot better. And now let's move on to the last floor. <laughs> Starting off with the Greenwood, it's a pretty standard four-door muscle car, although it is pretty fast, and it also has a money tech, which is a big bonus. Slightly overpriced once again, in my opinion, though. Moving on to the Ruiner, I really only have it for the sake of the collection. Although it does look nice, I almost never drive it, and that's because it's pretty slow for modern GTA Online. Moving on to the LE, a very nice-looking muscle car. It's absolutely gorgeous. Once again, looks great in all colors, and I absolutely love mine. Moving on to the Drift Tampa, it's a pretty cool car, although when it came out, you couldn't drift in it. Now, however, Rockstar has added drift tuning to the game so you can put it on moving on to the deviant it has similar handling to the vamos and that's why i don't really like this car it does look great though moving on to the hustler it's a pretty nice looking old car although it's not particularly notable performance is not really there and yeah overall pretty standard fare for old muscle cars finishing it off with the click it used to be very good when it first came out although it's kind of fallen behind nowadays although it is still a fun car to drive around and that is it for this garage and this garage costs about 14 million five hundred fifty six thousand dollars Moving on to a mix of supers and sports, starting off with the Osiris. It's a very nice car, although from the time period, I prefer the T20. This is not a bad car, though, by any means. Moving on to the Serrano. Uh, I kind of have it in the wrong garage here. It should be in one of my older supercar garages. But yeah, pretty standard fare for OG 2013 GTA Online. Moving on to the Schlagen. It's kind of just a lackluster supercar. I really love how it looks, but it's a shame that the performance is just lacking. But it does look great, which is a bonus, but it doesn't make up for everything. Moving on to the Zentorno, a legendary car, absolutely iconic car for GTA Online. Yeah, you can never really go wrong with no matter what stage you are in GTA Online, rich or poor, it's a fantastic car for everyone. Moving on to the Comet SR, it's basically the regular Comet, but faster and with slightly more modifications. It was pretty expensive for the time, but it's a good car overall. Moving on to the Pariah, it's a very good sports car on last gen consoles, that being Xbox One and PlayStation 4. Not really on new gen because of HSW, but on old gen, it's a very good sports car for racing. Now let's move on to the next four. Oh, 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 oh. Moving on to, I forgot the name of this car actually. Kind of goes to show how it is in my lineup. I don't really drive it that much. It does look pretty nice though, but it was pretty expensive at the time. I don't think you can buy it anymore. Moving on to the ETR1 though. I love the ETR1. I love how it looks, but the performance just isn't there. It's a decent handler, but it's just not that fast. And in today's age, speed is kind of preferred over handling. Although it is good to have a mixture of both. Moving on to the RE7B. At one point, the fastest vehicle in GTA Online through the use of a glitch. Unfortunately, the glitch got patched and 
this is no longer the fastest car but it was a good time moving on to the thrax basically a better version of the nero in my opinion it looks better has more mods and performs better as well i believe don't quote me on that but yeah overall solid car a bit expensive though moving on to the nero a worse version of the thrax in my opinion i think customization is actually the same on both cars but i just prefer the thrax over the nero moving on to the corsita one of the most objectively beautiful looking sports cars supercars in gta online right now it is simple understated which a lot of cars aren't these days it looks great ending off this four with the torero xo a very good car i actually bought a new one just to have the black stock wheels on it and yeah it's overall a great car to drive lots of customizations and yeah i'd recommend it so now let's move on to the final four oh, oh, i should really get an elevator moving on to the 10f a very nice car a bit expensive but i mean it's pretty standard for most supercars these days overall a pretty good car to drive and has lots of customization moving on to the tyrus probably my favorite sounding car in the game it looks fantastic as well but it doesn't have a lot of mods i think it's a highly underrated car more people should have bought it when it was available moving on to the virtue it was free but overall i think it's kind of a meh car it is decently fast but if you never got it for free i wouldn't recommend buying it for full price in my opinion it's just not worth it moving on to the entity mt it's a kind of overpriced car a very overpriced car actually with the car in hsw alone you're well over three million dollars and the performance just isn't there in my opinion although it does look pretty good which is a bonus but doesn't make up for everything moving on to the furia a very nice looking car in my opinion overpriced as well but i got it on trade price which is good and yeah a very beautiful car as well very simple moving on to the x80 proto a legendary car at this point everyone knows about it at one point it was probably the best supercar in the game very expensive at 2.7 million but just for nostalgia alone i think it's worth it ending this garage off with the Italian GTO Stinger TT. I think it gets more praise than it deserves. Um, the handling just isn't there. It is a very fast car, but most cars these days are fast, so not really too impressive for me. I wouldn't recommend it. And now that is it for this garage. And this garage costs about $35,990,000. Moving on to my Euro and Armored Cars Garage, first off we have the Zion Classic, a pretty standard car in my opinion, doesn't really handle that great, it's not that fast, but it does look very nice as well, and has a good amount of modifications. Moving on to the Nebula Turbo, my preferred drifting vehicle before the actual drift tuning feature was added. I still think it's a fun drifting car, but now with the new drift tuning, there's better options. Moving on to the Comet Retro, a very nice looking car, probably my favorite looking car in this garage. It was pretty expensive at the time, for what it is at least, but I still love it. Moving on to the Sentinel Classic, a very nice looking car as well. Relatively affordable these days not too expensive and it also has a lot of mods available moving on to the zion here i have it kind of in the wrong garage uh but really i don't know which garage this could fit in it's an old car from 2013 and that's about it for that one moving on to the schwarzer it's a very nice looking car that i never see anyone drive although you can find it on the streets i think it looks very nice but once again just a standard car from 2013 gta traffic so now let's move on to the next floor oh, i need my inhaler Oh my god. Starting off with the Armored Karuma, a solid car for everyone. No matter if you're a high level, low level, it is all reliable, and that's about it. Very nice. Moving on to the Paragon R Armored, you can only get it by completing all the casino story missions as a leader, and you get it for free, which is a cool reward for completing all the missions, and it's a pretty good car overall. Moving on to the Duco Death, it was a very good car before many armored cars started to get added. Um, it was pretty cheap at around 250000 but now there's just many better options. Moving on to the Shafter V12 Armored, it's a pretty standard armored car, nothing too special. Moving on to the Cognitive Cognacetti armored. I hate how the armor looks on this one. I prefer the regular Cognacetti. Moving on to the Night Shark, basically a better version of the Insurgent. It's more nimble. I think it takes more rockets as well, but don't quote me on that. And overall, it's a very good car to drive in free mode. Moving on to the Insurgent, basically a worse version of the Night Shark, but it is around half the price, so you have to weigh the pros with the cons. But once again, another example of an old reliable car. Now let's move on to the last four. Okay, I'm live joking. This is getting tired. I right, ignore all these other ones. This is an unfinished GT car floor. Um, so here we have the Masakro, a very nice car. I absolutely love it. So underrated. It's a very nice car, even to drive today. It's decently fast and handles great, which is fantastic. Although I'm pretty sure you can't buy it anymore. Moving on to the LG RH8, it's a pretty standard car. I mean, it is from a pretty long time ago, so you have to expect that. But it's free for everyone with a social club. So yeah, I can't really complain for free. It's a good price. And that is it for this garage. And this garage costs about $7,025,000. Moving on to my facility that has military vehicles, starting off with the weaponized Ingus. It's a pretty nice car. It does have HSW, which is crazy. If this thing was more powerful, it'd be unbalanced for sure, but it's very expensive and the gun is kind of locked at a 90 degree angle, so not too good. Moving on to the Insurgent Pickup Custom. I kind of just have it for the garage sake. Uh, I wouldn't really buy it if you don't need it or I wouldn't really buy it, period, honestly. Moving on to the Kanjali. Once again, I wouldn't really buy it. Here I do have a cool livery that was limited time, but 
I only have the livery on because it was limited time. I think it looks ugly, but yeah, I wouldn't buy the Kondrali. It's kind of outdated at this point. Talking about outdated, moving on to the Barrage. It was outdated from the beginning, honestly. It has kind of no armor protection at all. The guns on it are pretty good, while the one in the front, the grenade washer in the back is not that great. But yeah, pretty outdated in my opinion once again. Moving on to the Stromberg, a very good car for what it is. I still see people doing PvP with it today, but once again, kind of outdated as well. First of all, stairs. Now I have to run a mile across the facility. So here I have my Chernobog. bog. Bunch of people swear by it, but honestly, it's kind of just, man, you're locked in a one place you when you use the missiles. So it's kind of bad for that reason. You're a sitting duck. The only redeeming factor is that it's not that expensive. Moving on to the APC, a very nice military vehicle. I only bought it because it was in GTA 4. In the Bout of Gaetoni, you had to have gotten six stars and it would chase you. So yeah, I kind of just bought it for nostalgia, but I mean, it's an okay vehicle, but once again there's just better out there it's outdated at this point moving on to the patriot mill spec a very nice looking car and it has a ton of customizations but it's kind of just not that good it's not necessarily outdated but it's just not that good at all moving on to the menacer basically the insurgent pickup custom but on a smaller scale uh, i do have this cool livery on it but yeah it is it is what it is honestly i only bought it for the sake of the collection and that is it for military vehicles in my facility and this garage costs about 18 million eight hundred fifty thousand dollars Moving on to my nightclub service entrance, there is only one vehicle because only one can fit, and that is my limo. The Patriot limo, that is. And yeah, it's kind of just a limo. It's fun to mess around with your friends with, go in the back and, you know, go around the map driving around partying. And it costs around 350000 Moving on to my hypercars garage, starting off with the XA21. A lot of people say it has the best sounding engine in the game. I personally do not think that, but that is, of course, subjective. Moving on, we have the SM722. It's kind of an expensive car for what it is. It's not too great, but it does look damn good, and it has a lot of liveries as well. Moving on to the Krieger. It is still probably one of the best cars to race on old gen and even on new gen it is still very good as well but hsw has kind of outclassed it moving on to the t20 a legendary car from the ill-gotten gains part 2 it's just fantastic how can you argue with the mclaren p1 beautiful car it doesn't have too many mods but in my opinion it doesn't really need them moving on to the neo a car absolutely no one bought and i don't know why it's a very nice looking car it's decently fast it does handle a bit strangely but it's a beautiful looking car with a good amount of mods how can you argue moving on to the divesti 8 with hsw this thing is an absolute demon on the track its handling is kind of meh but its top speed is brilliant and it is certainly a car and that's about it moving on to the 811 it's a kind of good car from this time period 1.1 million really is not that much especially when it first released and it's an overall solid car it handles pretty poorly though can't seem to remember the name of this car but it is a pretty nice looking car overall the performance isn't really there but it's a very nice looking car with a decent amount of mods moving on to the emirates it's a very good car on track it's handling and it's cornering is brilliant it's top speed is not really there so you only want to pick it on circuit tracks but overall it is still a good car moving on to the zaruso a car absolutely no one bought once again i really see why it was pretty expensive and for not being a top performer i understand and that is it for my nightclub b2 garage and this garage costs about 21 million three hundred forty-five thousand dollars Moving on to my Rally Cars Garage, starting off with the Brioso RA, which has HSW. The HSW doesn't really add a lot to this car, unfortunately, which is very sad because I paid a lot of money for it. And yeah, I wouldn't recommend you making the same mistake. Moving on to the Omnis, it's a pretty decent car from this time period. It handles pretty good off-road, but on the street, it's not really a top performer. I wouldn't recommend it. Moving on to the GB200, a very nice looking car. Um, it handles better on the street than off-road, in my opinion. I don't know about particular stats, but it is pretty inexpensive as well. Moving on to the Comet Retro Safari. It's a fantastic car, but the camera angle is very high up, which kind of discourages me from driving it. Moving on to the Brioso 300, um, even with all these crazy rally looking mods, it's a terrible rally car, even on the street. It's just not really that good and yeah i just wouldn't buy it moving on to the la Curese, the rear lights are pretty cool actually they kind of uh flash they don't really just stay on and that's pretty much the only notable thing about this car moving on to the flash gt it's a very good car off-road actually when ko perico races came out most of them are off-road so i mainly used it it's a very good car moving on to the issy classic it's a pretty stupid looking car and it does handle decently actually for its size and it is decently fast as well moving on to the issy sport the wheel fin is atrocious on this it's absolutely terrible and that is why i I don't drive this car at all it just i can't I, I just can't ending it off with the issy rally it is a very nice car to drive on the street actually off-road it's not that good because the handling isn't there it is very fast though and that is it for the rally cars garage and this garage costs about eight million seven hundred thousand dollars
Moving on to my GT and luxury cars garage, starting off with the Spectre, an absolutely beautiful car that I never see get driven, unfortunately. It handles decently, but I think it kind of just got swept under the rug. Moving on to the 8F Drafter, a beautiful car that I see get driven pretty often. It's a decent car and it wasn't that expensive. I think it's around 825,000. Highly recommend it if it is still on sale. Moving on to the Bestia, it's a pretty good car for what it is. Um, I, It is still on sale, I know that for sure. It does look pretty unique and I love shooting brakes, but a lot of people do not love shooting brakes, unfortunately. I think they get more hate than they deserve. Serve, but yeah if you like them then get it moving on to the 770 it's a pretty standard car nothing really too special it's not too fast it doesn't handle particularly great but it does look fantastic and has a decent amount of mods as well moving on to the Lynx, a beautiful understated car i love the jaguar f-type so much and rockstar did a pretty decent job at making it into gta 5 online it is pretty expensive for what it is though moving on to the cognacetti non-armored i love how it looks it's actually very insulated on the inside which is a nice touch by rockstar and it's just beautiful it looks great in this two-tone colorway and i love it moving on to the revolter it has so much torque it is not even funny i thought this car was electric at first until i popped the hood and saw that there was indeed an engine and yeah i just love driving it very understated very simple styling and i love it moving on to the shafter v12 long wheelbase i kind of like the short wheelbase better and it performs better this one's cool for what it is but it's a little bit too long for me but it does look pretty good for what it is of course based off of mercedes s class and yeah that's about it moving on to the Cognac City cabrio a car you can no longer buy unfortunately the convertible aspect of this car does look kind of strange actually uh kind of makes it look like a whale in my opinion but i mean it's a cool car regardless and you get off with the baller long wheelbase here i kind of just have a blacked out build because you can't really do too much with this car and yeah it is what it is there's a lot of ballers in the game and that is it for this garage and so this garage costs about five million twenty five thousand dollars Moving on to my Variety SUVs garage, starting off with this Military Patriot here that is from the KO Perico DLC. It has a decent amount of mods and it certainly looks cool, but in my opinion, the price is just not worth it. It's like 800,000 to start all in. It's probably like 1.2 million. Moving on to the Dubsa 6x6, a very cool car. Uh, the 6x6 G-Wagon in real life actually does look pretty cool. And yeah, this one does as well. It's still available for purchase if you want it. Moving on to the Mesa Merriweather version. I do like how it looks, although we are getting a new Jeep in the DLC as part of Drip Feed, so I'm excited for that. And if you have the clean version of this without all the off-road gear, just the square body, please message me on Xbox V Falls V with spaces in between. Yeah, I just really want the square body clean version of the Mesa, so if you have it, please message me, please. Moving on to the OG Baller. There's so many ballers in the game at this point, I probably will just get rid of this one. And there's a new baller coming out as well as part of Drip Feed. Moving on to my second Patriot of the collection, I will probably get rid of this one after this video video because i don't really have a purpose for it i have another one that i can drive if i want to but yeah it's a pretty standard og suv from 2013 moving on to the illusion i don't really know why they added it it's probably a car that will make it into gta 6 and that is why they added it as for the gta 5 version though it's a pretty slow car it handles like an absolute boat like a cruise ship it does look just like a ford expedition though moving on to the fq2 i'll probably get rid of this one as well i never drive it i mean it's a weird looking car for sure but I don't know i have an ochi suv's garage and all the suvs in there i actually drive i don't drive this one i'll probably get rid of it moving on to the obey i wagon no one should buy this i think it's off sale actually thank the lord it's like 1.7 million dollars it's absolutely terrible it's slow as hell top speed is like 95 yeah i just will not recommend it at all moving on to the novak an suv i would recommend actually it's only six hundred thousand dollars it's very fast handles very good and it looks pretty good in my opinion can't really go wrong and i love it and that is it for my variety suvs garage and to this garage costs about five million four hundred sixty thousand dollars moving on to more hypers um this garage is incomplete so i only have these three for now starting off with the locust it's a very interesting car the performance isn't really there but it has a lot of customizations which makes me love this car pretty fun to drive as well moving on to the turismo omaggio it looks just like the ferrari f8 rocks are absolutely nailed it on the head with this one it has a lot of beautiful liveries as well and yeah, the car is just beautiful, it handles fantastically, I'd recommend it. A supercar I would not recommend is the Tyrant. It's way too expensive, it's way too wide, it's slow, it has no customizations, it's just terrible. Please, if you have the Tyrant, sell it. I only have it for the collection. And that is it. And these three supercars cost about $6,960,000. Moving on to my random garage, there's not really a theme for this one. Starting off with the two Stanier cop cars I have. I have a sheriff's unit and kind of just a regular stealth unit for the city. An absolutely beautiful car. I'm so glad Rockstar went the direction of adding mods for these instead of just importing the regular cop car that we see on the streets and allowing us to buy it. They actually added unique mods and they're fantastic. They are very expensive though. Moving on to the Romero hearse. Um, I had it before you could buy it actually. It was rare and then they added it so you could buy it and then they took it away again. So it is rare again. Probably the only 
only car to get added and then taken back so uh yeah strange car uh but it's a hearse that's about it moving on to the dynasty it's a pretty goofy car i have it in this old rundown taxi configuration and it's not really a great performer it kind of just is what it is kind of expensive as well and moving on to the br8 probably the best open wheel car in the game right now i think the dr1 is slightly slower than it and there is a ton of customizations for this car but it is very expensive moving on to the orcher i only bought it because i don't know it was halloween and i wanted two halloween cars i bought this and the frankenstein and yeah it's a cool car overall but i don't know only buy it if you really want it moving on to the frankenstein once again a car i would only buy if you really want it it does have this strange open top rear which is interesting to say the least but yeah it's a strange car it doesn't perform good i wouldn't recommend it honestly moving on to the slam truck i hate it i hate it i hate it moving on to the buccaneer custom i do have this glitched roof on it which does look pretty cool but it's a pretty standard lowrider and that is it for my random weird car garage and so this garage is relatively cheap at around twelve million eight hundred thousand dollars moving on to my classic supers car garage uh here we're starting off with the torero it doesn't look that good in my opinion rockstar kind of did a bad job at importing it into gta online but it's a standard old supercar moving on to the infernus classic a car rockstar made way better in gta online and yeah it just looks good i don't know if it's a great performer honestly i don't know numbers off the top of my head but it's a very nice looking car moving on to the ardent the car everyone thought would be a submarine car but then the stromberg came out and yeah that was the submersible car this one kind of fell behind but it does look very good a classic wedge shaped car it's very beautiful moving on to the gt500 once again a very beautiful classic looking supercar that is from this time period nothing really else to say moving on to the tourismo classic a very fast car with hsw it does get pretty expensive though but it's beautiful it's fast good handler what else could you ask moving for? on to the cheetah classic it's a pretty nice looking car as well um the performance is not really there but it is a good car to drive it handles decently and it is decently fast but on the track probably not the best moving on to the sterling gt a car rockstar gave hsw and then took away makes absolutely no sense at all they probably did it for gta plus but whatever moving on to the gp1 a very nice looking car although it is very expensive i think it was around 1.3 million but the performance just isn't there it is the mclaren f1 a lot of people will love it though moving on to the rapid gt classic in my opinion it's kind of just a standard car it's not too great it is around eight hundred thousand dollars but yeah standard old car from this time period moving on to the penetrator a very nice looking car around eight hundred eighty thousand dollars and it's a pretty fun car to drive as well it's a pretty good car i never saw anyone drive it at all i don't think it's on sale anymore unfortunately maybe it is on sale i'm not too sure but that is it for this garage and this garage costs about eight million seven hundred twenty thousand dollars moving on to my jdm and euro garage starting off with the kandro i really love how rockstar made it look like it's real life version the honda civic i absolutely love it and i love the generation civic it looks fantastic has a lot of mods it's a great car moving on to the kandro sj basically the same car but a coupe configuration instead of a hatch once again really love how realistic it looks it's a great car it doesn't handle that great or it's not that fast but mods are great moving on to the post wood it's a pretty decent car for what it is but it's kind of expensive there are a lot of mods and it is decently fun to drive but i don't know performance is kind of lacking there moving on to the blista compact a car that used to be in gta 4 and now is in gta 5 it's a very meh car overall nothing really too special it is very cheap though which is notable moving on to the ingot a hybrid of like four different wagons from this era and yeah it's basically just standard traffic but it is pretty cool it doesn't have any mods which is unfortunate but it does look pretty cool i love wagons furthering the wagon theme we have the stratum there are tons of rare configurations of this that you can find on the street for free mine is the lip plus antenna configuration um no sunroof unfortunately i wish i had that one but yeah it's a very cool car very rare to see one with all of them i'm pretty sure the only way to get that is through modding but yeah it's a dope car i love it and it's great Moving on to the fudo gtx i personally don't really like it that much um i don't drift it but if you had low grip tires on it you probably could i don't know i just don't really like it that much i'm sure people of the ae86 fans of it will like it but me personally i don't moving on to the club a very nice hatchback that i love to drive it is very expensive it was like 1.2 million but i got this off of the podium which definitely helped and yeah it's a pretty cool car decent amount of mods as well moving on to the tropos rally it's a very cool car the engine in the back is like offset to the left which probably isn't the best for weight balance and yeah it's just such a quirky car i'm very glad to have it um it is off sale unfortunately but yeah very cool car i love it and it was only like seven hundred thousand as well moving on to the asbo i'm sure people in europe will appreciate this car more than americans but me personally i don't we i never saw these on the street it's kind of just a mad car and that is it for this garage and this garage costs about six million one hundred thirty thousand dollars
Moving on to a variety of classic sports cars, starting off with the Mamba. It's a very nice looking car. It has probably the best startup sound in the game. I absolutely love it. A bit expensive, but overall fantastic. Moving on to the Tornado Custom, an absolutely beautiful car. I love how the Chevy Bel Air looks. This looks just like a Bel Air. And yeah, you can't go wrong. I put the highest level of hydraulics that you can in this car. It made it very expensive, but it's a very nice looking car. I absolutely love it in this red color. Moving on to, I believe, the Michelle GT. This car was very expensive, like $1.3 million, and it's pretty terrible. Thankfully, they took it off sale because it was just a scam. Even with all the money I have, I kind of regret buying it. Moving on to the Soft Top Stinger. It's a pretty standard car from this era, 2013. It really is nothing too special not ahead of its class or anything moving on to the glendale i have it on these wheels that i don't really like i'll probably change it after this video but as for it it's a pretty standard car 200,000 is not that much to ask for anyways moving on to the coquette blackfin it's a pretty nice looking car um it does have a two-tone colorway option but pretty standard overall moving on to the coquette classic top list i prefer the top list version the one with the roof kind of looks a bit strange in my opinion but it is a very fun car to drive overall moving on to the hard top stinger it's a better version of the soft top stinger in my opinion um but overall it's still kind of a mad car pretty expensive too 875 Next up, we have the Viserys based on the Ditomosa Pantera, which was featured in the Fast and Furious film, I believe part five. I love the franchise and I tried to recreate it here and I think I did a pretty good job. Ending it off with the Monroe, a very nice car. 490,000 is a bit steep for what it is, but it sounds great. It has decent handling and it's relatively fast. And that is it for this garage. And this garage costs about $6,785,000. Moving on to my trucks and vans, starting off with the Bison, it has a very mean engine sound, like a big V8 trying to work hard, and it's overall an okay truck. Moving on to the Bodhi Trevor's vehicle in story mode, unfortunately you cannot buy it anymore, it does have a pretty strange uh, thing there on the inside as you can see, or maybe you can't, uh, I don't really know what it is, I don't want to know what it is, but the Bodhi's a pretty eh, truck, I mean, but Trevor drove it, so that's why I have it. Moving on to the Bobcat, I hate this truck, not because of what it is, but it looks like it could have been a dually from the big fenders in the back, and unfortunately Unfortunately, isn't we really need a dually in gta 5 online moving on to the side where it's a pretty eh, truck as well it's basically just regular traffic in sandy shores but it is a pretty nice looking truck pretty sure it's based on the f-150 an older generation of it moving on to the sand king still one of the best off-roaders in the game because of its ground clearance and the way it rolls it's just a fantastic off-roader and it is free if you find it on the streets moving on to the yuga classic 4x4 unfortunately this is not a great off-roader it has like no torque no power whatsoever and basically no ground clearance it's a pretty eh, van over all. it's unfortunate though because it does look pretty cool moving on to the rumpo custom a van that absolutely no one bought when it was added as part of finance and felony except for me of course because i wanted an off-road van in my collection moving on to the gang burrito once again a van no one bought when it was added as part of the heist update i'm pretty sure they just added it for the computer scene when you like steal a hard drive in that one alleyway but yeah it's pretty much a regular van and that's about it moving on to the vivanite or vanvanite however you say it based on the toyota sienna a van no one was asking for at all pretty sure they only added it because it's being added as part of gta 6 ending this garage off with the moonbeam um i didn't upgrade to the benny's version i actually kind of like how it looks here based on the chevy astro i think it's a pretty cool looking van actually very square and i like it and that is it for this garage and this garage costs about two million six hundred seventy two thousand dollars Moving on to my enthusiast sports car garage, my auto shop, starting off with the Jesser RR. It's a pretty cool car from the Tuners update. It has pretty good handling, pretty good speed, pretty good customization. It's overall a very nice car. A love letter from Rockstar to enthusiast car collectors. Moving on to the Vector, a very nice looking car as well. I love this color. I have it in absolutely fantastic. I do kind of hate how the logo looks here, but whatever. It is what it is. The car itself looks fantastic. Moving on to the Euros. It's a very nice looking car as well. It handles pretty fantastically, but its speed unfortunately is not really there although in real life the speed is not really there either this is more of a handler or so what i've heard at least but i'm very glad to have it nonetheless it looks pretty great moving on to the cypher an absolutely beautiful car um it does not look like this anymore i changed the livery i only put it on because it's rare and you can't get it anymore but i don't really care i made it look more realistic i gave it more realistic rims and yeah it doesn't look like that anymore moving on to the 300r once again no longer looks like this it is red with different wheels um although it doesn't look bad here it kind of just looks a little basic for my preference overall it's a decent car a bit over expensive if anything moving on to the fr36 this car is so good i actually doubled up on it i made this one into a drift car and then i bought another one to drive on the street beautiful car i absolutely love the g35 and yeah it's fantastic moving on to the rt3000 once again i absolutely love the honda s2000 such a beautiful underrated car you're lucky if you have one right now before the prices went up but yeah fantastic car and it's a great car in gta 5 online as well moving on to the s95 probably one of my favorite cars to drive in gta online it's so fast the way it handles it's so it's so characteristic 
charismatic. It has so much like attitude. I don't know. It's a great car and I love it. It is very expensive though. Moving on to the Sentinel XS with HSW. HSW unfortunately doesn't really add too much. It's very expensive and it kind of just says what it is. Ending it off with the Banshee also with HSW. Very fantastic car with HSW. Has tons of torque. Very fun to drive. And that is it for this garage. And this garage costs about 14295000 Moving on to a mix of Hypers, Supers, and Sedans, starting off with the Ignis. It's great for what it is, but whenever I want to drive the Ignis, I will just take the weaponized one because it's way faster and has a minigun. So yeah, it is what it is. Moving on to the Tesseract, a very overpriced car in my opinion. It is pretty cool looking, it is electric, and it does have a tinted front windshield, which is pretty unique, but very overpriced in my opinion. Moving on to the Xeno, once again, very overpriced for what it is. The handling is pretty good, but speed isn't there, and even handling is kind of meh. You kind of lose it at a lot of corners. It's, all, it's just alright. Next up, we have the Cyclone 2, a very fun car to drive for the first 10 seconds because that's the only benefit you get of it. Tons of torque, very fast, but after that, tops out pretty fast, as electric supercars do. Moving on to the Cyclone, it's basically a worse version of the Cyclone 2. Um, it doesn't have the same benefits, and it's just alright as well. Very expensive as well. Moving on to the Taui GTO, still one of the best sports cars to race. I still think this is in the wrong class and should be in supers, but for what it is, in the sports class, it's extremely good, extremely competitive, very good car for everyone, no matter what rank you are. Moving on to the RSX, it's a very nice looking car, as you can see here as well. Very competitive on track as well, without HSW. Handles great, decently fast, and it is relatively inexpensive. Moving on to the Wagner, a very nice looking car, a lot of people's favorites, I'm sure. It looks fantastic it handles great it's pretty fast as well pretty inexpensive i think it's around 1.6 million dollars and yeah it's a great car no liveries unfortunately which is kind of sad moving on to the s2 cabrio basically the comet s2 but with a convertible as you can see here i prefer the convertible it looks so much nicer but i think the coupe is faster ending this floor off with the champion it's a very nice looking car but unfortunately performance isn't there it does have a money tech which is great but i just wish it performed a little better and here we are downstairs. These are sedans. Starting off with the Deity. Very nice car. It has a Monty Tech. It looks fantastic. It is a little bit slow and expensive, but I love it. Moving on to the Windsor Drop. 950000 is relatively inexpensive, although you can't buy this car anymore. It is a great car, and I absolutely love how it looks. Moving on to the Jugular. A very nice looking car. Very nice startup sound. Very nice idle. Everything about the car is great. It is relatively inexpensive as well, and it just looks fantastic. It's a four-door. It's great. Moving on to the Cinco Mila, or however you say it, I don't know. It's a pretty standard car. It is very fast and it does look fantastic i see no one driving it which is unfortunate because i really like mine i'd hope to see more on the road moving on to the komoda a very nice looking car as well performance isn't really there but you can't really ask for too much it's not too expensive and it looks fantastic has a lot of mods as well i'd recommend it moving on to the tailgater s a very nice looking car i absolutely love how it looks based on the audi rs3 Oh, it's just fantastic i love it moving on to the raiden a car the car community probably hates because it started the evolution of the electric sedan the tesla model 3 and tesla model s but in gta online it's just all right moving on to the ominous egt a very nice looking car I absolutely adore how it looks it's just brilliant i love it but unfortunately it is pretty slow especially for the price moving on to the neon a bit better basically ominous egt performance wise i prefer how the ominous egt looks but this is a better ominous egt on paper and that is it for this garage garage my agency and this costs a steep 35 million eight hundred thousand dollars moving on to my more trucks garage starting off with the mesa here it's a glitch version with the off-road gear off and the square body component off as well looks fantastic and i love it moving on to the camacho unfortunately you cannot get this anymore it is fantastic off-road and it does look fantastic as well lots of mods I miss it. Moving on to the Everon. Once again, a truck you cannot get anymore, unfortunately. Has absolutely massive, chonky tires. This will go anywhere you want it to. Very nice car. It was pretty expensive, though. Moving on to the Riata, a truck you cannot get anymore. <laughs> it is a very good truck, but unfortunately, a lot of these you just can't get anymore. But it's pretty good for what it is. Moving on to the Guardian, a very fun truck. You can have friends in the back. Uh, they can stand in the truck bed, and they will not fall off very fun truck to mess around with and it's very big as well moving on to the Kara Kara, it's a very fun truck it looks fantastic it is a weird mix of what seems to be the tundra and the f-150 but it looks great regardless moving on to what i believe is the actual tundra the contender a very fun truck i got it from a subscriber um i forgot his name but thank you so much for giving it to me letting me buy it off you in the car meet very fun truck very cheap as well moving on to the Draugr, probably the best off-roader in the game not probably it is the best off-roader has so much torque tons of ground clearance it's a great off-roader, but it is kind of strange looking. Moving on to the Helion, a very fun off-roader as well. I took the front bumper off to give it better ground clearance, and it performs great off-road. Uh, it's great, yeah. You cannot buy it anymore, unfortunately. It was like 750000 for the price. That's a steal. Moving on to the Yosemite Rancher, a very cool looking truck. Tons of mods. It is a Benny's car after all, and it's fantastic. It is a bit expensive, but that's it for this garage.
and this garage costs about seven million one hundred sixty-seven thousand dollars. Moving on to my variety of classics garage, starting off with the Impaler LX. Very fun car to drive around, it's pretty fast, and it's based on the Capri. Everyone loves a good old Capri, and I love mine as well. Moving on to the Tool Up M100, I believe it's called. It's kind of just meh. It's very expensive for what it is. I mean, it's kind of slow, it's sluggish, it's just not great. Moving on to the Eudora, a beautiful car here. I absolutely love how this looks. It feels a little bit faster. I drive it more often, but overall, it's a great car. I'd recommend it if you're into these old classics. Moving on to the Stafford, the car that goes on podium every other week. And uh, it's a pretty okay car, I guess. The speed is there. Handling isn't really, but it looks fantastic. Moving on to the Surfer Custom, a pretty cool looking car overall, but it's very expensive for what it is. I wouldn't buy it if, unless you really have the money. Moving on to the Roosevelt Valor, a car I would recommend if you have the money. Very nice looking car, a decent amount of mods as well. Moving on to the Fogola, a car beloved by the car community and Rockstar took it away, unfortunately. People would slam these, stance them. No longer there, but as a car, it is what it is. Moving on to the Z-Type, the fastest car in GCA5 when it released, beating the Adder by one mile per hour. And yeah, a legend at this point. Next up, we have the Broadway, a very nice looking car overall, but performance isn't really there. It's pretty standard overall. It's not that expensive either, similar to the Hermes or the Hermes. However, the hell you say, very nice looking car. It actually is relatively quick and it does have airbags, which is pretty unique. And that is it for this garage. And this garage costs about $8,440,000. Moving on to my old and kind of new supercars in my Eclipse Boulevard garage number one, we have the Reaper. I absolutely love the Reaper, very underrated. I never really saw anyone drive it. That's unfortunate, it's gone. Moving on to the FMJ, very nice looking car. Rockstar pretty much nailed it until they got to the headlights. The headlights look nothing like the actual 4 GT, but it's a pretty nice looking car overall. It handles pretty good, but the speed is not really there. It is a very nice looking car though. Moving on to the Tempesta, a car that performs worse than it looks. And unfortunately it looks great, but performance is just not there. Even when it first came out, it's a very nice looking car though, tons of mods and I absolutely just love how it looks. Moving on to the Turismo, a car that used to be very competitive in racing when it came out in like 2013 or 2014. I forgot when, but it's not competitive anymore. It is still very cheap though, if you buy it off another player. Next up, we have the Furore GT. I never saw anyone drive this ever. Out of all my time playing GT Online, never saw anyone drive it. I don't understand why. It wasn't very expensive. It's a nice looking car. Moving on to the Taipan. Unfortunately, it looks fantastic, but similar to the Tempesta, it just doesn't perform that great. I also hate how there's a lift. Like the license plate in the rear looks horrible. Let's put it that way. Would not recommend it. Next up, we have the Autarch. I kind of covered it in this carbon. I think it makes it look more exotic than it is, and it looks fantastic. I absolutely love it. It's a decent performing car, but it looks better than it performs. Next up, we have the Entity, a classic OG car for everyone who played GTA 5 in this time period. It's a fantastic car, what can I say? Similar to the Adder, once again, a very classic OG car, so much nostalgia within the Adder, used to be the best car in the game. And we conclude this garage with the Cheetah, once again, a very classic OG car from this time period, probably the worst out of the three, I would say, but I prefer how this one looks out of all of them. And that is it for this garage. And this garage costs about $12,222,000. Moving on to my GT Coupes garage, starting off with the Verlariere, a car I saw absolutely no one drive. It's unfortunate because I really love how it looks. It has some mods, but that's not really the point of it. It also was pretty inexpensive as well, but I love it. I love how it looks. Next up, we have the Italian GTB. Once again, a car that I saw more often than the Verlariere, but I don't know. Overall, the performance isn't really there. I think this car gets more praise than it deserves. Next up, we have the Growler. It's unfortunate because the Cayman of this generation in general in real life is known as a very good handling car. Unfortunately, that does not translate to GTA Online. It's a pretty poor handling car. I wouldn't recommend it unless you really love Porsche. Next up, we have the Tundra, a car that looks fantastic. It also is a pretty decent performer. It's very fast for what it is, at least. The handling isn't really there, but I love it. Moving on to the Banshee 900R. I absolutely love the Banshee 900R. I'm sure a lot of people do. It's probably my favorite Benny's car. So much customization. It looks great. It's just a good car overall. Moving on to the Paragon R, probably my favorite looking car in this whole garage. It looks fantastic. It's beautiful. A lot of torque, decent amount of speed. It handles pretty decently. And yeah, it's just, it's a good car. Moving on to the Comet S2, a very nice car to drive somewhat. It's so strange because the car is fast and it's great, but the handling is so slidey. I don't know. They need to fix that car. Moving on to my second Spectre. This is the Spectre Custom. I made it look more race livery out than the other one. The other one's like a clean example. I love how it looks, but I understand why people don't drive it. Moving on to the Comet. I kind of have it in the wrong garage here. Um, I guess it's a mix of supers, but yeah. It's a pretty decent car from 2013. Probably one of my favorites from 2013, actually. Moving on to the Coquette D10, a very fantastic car. Everyone was asking for a C8 Corvette, and we got it finally. And that is it for this garage. And this garage costs about $10,800,000.
Moving on to my four doors garage, starting off with the tailgater, Michael's car from story mode. It's a pretty decent car from the time period 2013, but now it's very outdated. However, it is one of the main protagonist cars, so that's why I have it. Moving on to the Oracle XS, once again, a standard 2013 OG street car they find off the street. I love how this Generation 7 series actually looks, which I know for sure I'm in the minority of. Everyone hates the bangle butt, they call it, from this era, but I don't know. GTA Online actually fixed it too. They made it so it's a little bit cleaner. But yeah, I actually love it. It's a pretty good car for what it is. Moving on to the Karuma non-armored. It's a pretty good car, but if you want to drive the Karuma, honestly, I would just drive the armored Karuma because it'll get more protection. But this car is not bad whatsoever. $95,000 isn't bad either. Moving on, we have the Sugoi. I absolutely love this generation Type R, the FK8. A lot of people don't. They say it's overstyled, uh, but I mean, I don't know. I think it's Honda just trying to be ambitious with their design. And a lot of people say it performs good on the track too. And I love how it looks. So it's a good car for me, I guess. Not sure about you. Moving on to the Reinhardt. I absolutely love how this looks. It's basically a three series wagon. I love how it looks. It handles decently and it has a good amount of mods as well. And it looks pretty realistic. I know I said looks, looks, looks pretty often, but it looks great. What can I say? Next up, we have the non-armored short wheelbase Shafter V12. I absolutely love how it sounds. It drives pretty good as well. It doesn't have too much mods, but in my opinion, doesn't really need them it's a good car overall and i'd recommend it moving on we have this mid 2000s camry once again i'm pretty sure they only added this because this is a car that will most likely be in gta 6 no one was asking for it but if anything it's relatable and i will never hate rockstar for making relatable cars moving on to the stanier i absolutely love how this looks a crown vic there's like two crown vics in the game i kind of prefer how this one looks and i made it look like an off-duty cop car and it looks pretty great it's free as well you can find it off the street moving on to the exemplar a very nice looking car absolutely no one drives it you can only buy it in showrooms i bought it in the showroom like a month ago i think it's a very nice sounding car it looks mean and i love it it should get more praise but i understand why it doesn't it's not a great performer by any means really but i really love how it looks hopefully more people adopt this style of getting cars that they just love how they look not really how they perform but we'll have to wait and see Moving on to the Brigham, a car I absolutely hate how it looks. It performs pretty meh, but it's so weird looking, but I only got it for the garage because it's a four-door. And speaking of garage, that is it for this garage. And this garage costs about $4,700,000. Moving on to my incomplete motorcycles garage. I need Rockstar to add more motorcycles, but here we have the Sovereign. Hopefully at some point they add a clean version without the livery, but it's a cool looking bike overall. Next up, we have the Fagio Sport, basically a mall cop scooter. I don't really know why they added it. I guess it's cool and novel, but not really great. Moving on to the PCJ600, a very nice looking bike. I love how it looks. I don't think it handles or performs great at all, but I just love how it looks. It looks great in my opinion. Moving on to the Akuma, a good performer when it first came out. It was one of the best up there with the baddie for sure. It had better handling than the baddie, I believe, but it's fallen behind since. Moving on to the Zombie Bobber, I love how these choppers look, and I also have the regular Zombie as well. Moving on to the Fagio Mod that I have not modded yet. Um, it looks crazy. You could put like hundreds of mirrors on the front of it. It looks absolutely stupid, but haven't gotten around to it yet. Next up, we have the Gargoyle, I believe. It's a pretty nice looking bike overall, and that's basically it for the motorcycle garage. And this garage costs about $525,000. Moving on to more old school muscle cars, starting off with the Phoenix. I absolutely love how the Phoenix looks. Unfortunately, they need to add HSW or something because I never see myself driving it. There's better cars to drive out there. Moving on to the Peyote Gasser, a very nice car to drag race. It has a pretty good launch and it looks pretty crazy as well. Tons of mods as well and not too expensive. Moving on to the Blade, a car absolutely no one bought. I don't know why. It's only $120,000. Unfortunately, you can't buy it anymore, but it's pretty cool. It also is at a strange lift as well, but I love it. Moving on to the Drift Yosemite, which you couldn't drift when it first came out, but now fortunately with drift tuning, you can drift it and it's a pretty good drift car overall. I absolutely love how it looks as well. Very nice looking car. Moving on to the Slam Truck Custom. It looks absolutely fantastic, has tons of mods, of course, being a Benny's car. And yeah, it's a pretty cool car, not too expensive either as well. Moving on to the Tool Up, it's a pretty cool car for what it is, but the handling is very strange. It is decently fast, it has a ton of mods, but the handling just absolutely turns me off with this car. Moving on to the regular Dukes, I thought it was the Beater, but nope, regular Dukes. Um, I have it for the Fast and Furious film as well, basically Dom's Charger, infamous at this point, everyone knows it. Moving on to the NASCAR Everon, it looks absolutely fantastic, but I mean, how can you go wrong? Tons of liveries, tons of customization options for it, and it's a pretty good performer on track as well. Moving on to the Sabre Turbo, I gave them all the same livery because they all fit, and it's a pretty good performer, but it was the only NASCAR before the Everon NASCAR, so take it as you will. And finally, ending this garage off with the Gauntlet Hellfire NASCAR. They all, this one is actually the worst performer, I believe. Um, the Everon NASCAR is the best one, but that is it for this garage and all my old muscle cars. And this garage costs about $7,014,000. Moving on to my terabyte, just for funsies, we have my Presser Mark II, of course. I absolutely hate it. I hate what GTA Online has become because of it, but 
it's whatever, it's a useful vehicle, and I got it before the price increase. Moving on to my Kosaka, we have my Torador, a very fun, good looking car. I mean, it's very expensive, I believe. It's like $4 million, but it's a good looking car, four door, submersible missiles. I mean, it's a good car overall. And that is it, everyone. What $400 million worth of cars can get you in GTA Online in the year 2023. Thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully this video does good because longer videos kind of get killed in the algorithm, but have a good day, good evening, and good night.